Thank goodness we're back on Southeast Texas Weekly because I know you just got wound up about this. Uh, a lot of people talking about the president, what needs to be done right now in, uh, involving jobs and the unemployment rate. Joining us to talk all about that, Godfrey Leggett on our far right, the really good looking man over here who has uh, uh, staunchly defended progressive causes for so long. Um, and our president. Since Jimmy Carter, has it been? Uh, oh, I not, not then. I wasn't that active back <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey Lewis, the Precinct 27 chair, uh, of course, a, a staunch Republican. Uh, he, he He's just to the right of Mussolini. Yeah. And <laughs> I'm just basking in the aura of these fine gentlemen, that's what I can say. And John, we're graced by John Beer, the District 5 City Councilman in the great city of Port Arthur. Great to see you, sir. Good seeing you. Oh, my goodness. This is going to be some kind of a... Some kind of a war uh, when we talk about jobs your city needs jobs oh yes you've talked about a great many times about ways to put uh, city policy in such a way and maneuver things to where uh, more and more people can get jobs we, uh, employment rate uh, obviously tremendously bad all around the area right uh, Port Arthur is among those cities as well that needs uh, needs jobs was this bill that the president had it just got slaughtered I mean nobody liked it uh, I'm trying to find out why why, why something uh, some amendment wasn't passed why something didn't uh, come together. What, what, when you see that, what, what's your immediate Well, what I'm, what I'm having a problem with or concerned about more so is that a lot of what the president proposes is good initially, but it gets watered down when it goes through the process and the politics of Washington. Mm. And uh, what we really do need to do is incentivize opportunities for people to have jobs. Uh, cutting taxes to a degree is good, but if you gut the system, you don't have enough to run the business. Mm -hmm. And that's the same situation we're kind of faced with in Port Arthur. We don't have enough money, but if you start talking about it some have or cutting taxes, mm -hmm. then you really can't run the business. So uh, the key thing is, is to take that great resource we have, which is a lot of unemployed people, skill them up, train them up, and put them to work in, in living wage jobs so that they could become contributors to the tax system and thus help us, uh, you know, take care of our business and run the city. Interesting. If the president came out, as Herman Cain, the Republican, has, and said, you know what, we need a national sales tax, Republicans would revolt. There would be, there would be, a, you Yes, know, you're right. Well, anything the president says, the Republicans revolt against. Because they made their mind up this man was going to fail from day one. And that's all they care about. And that's all they care. They don't care about the country. They only care about failing Obama. Is this that's an ridiculous. obstructionist yeah, Republican exactly that what is said. ridiculous. What they, is what they said, Republican Jeff. Party? I, I have, point? I got to respond to this. Well, go ahead. Uh, you're, you're telling me that the Republicans made up their mind that President himself, and so thereby the president failed. That's ridiculous. The president failed on his own bit because he had a policy that's resonated with the American people. All I'm saying is, Jeff, that three or four prominent Republicans said that early on, that we must make Obama a one-term president. We must make sure he fails. If the polls and are to be believed, that's going to happen. Well, at, at this point, this president is not really resonating with the American I'm people. I'm almost at the point where I'm ready if, to if let them have right. it. Let them have the tar baby and see if they can do something with it. You know? Well, they had the tar baby, what, uh, previous, what, 12, well, 16 years? Well, but you know, of this time. all these politicians, John, each, no apologies for your being a pol <laughs> but at the federal level, it yeah. seems like they all owe favors to somebody, you know? And, well, well, that's, and it's not that's to the American concerns. people that they're owing their favors. Well, that's how, what do I think get, Jeff Lewis, how do we get Jeff How do we get the Republican Party and the Democratic Party into a position where some kind of a jobs bill, some kind of a stimulus, because some believe that's essentially all it was was a stimulus, oh, stimulus package. Well, we, we've seen how well stimuluses work and their no, we haven't. work, and, and, we, and they don't. No, we haven't. So basically we're, what we're going to be doing is looking at this bill on a segment-by-segment -segment basis and seeing what good is in there. The Republicans Let's find have, something and then we can pass those uh, pass those on agreement. Jeff, I've but got there's a, a lot of there's a lot of censorious Democrats out there that don't like they're what's just been scared. proposed. They're just scared because Yeah, they're they're scared because they're gonna go back their electorate back home and the people aren't gonna like it and they're gonna get voted out of office so they vote for it. Why we That's why we have representative Republic because the people don't like what they're seeing Sometimes in Washington. Sometimes people don't understand Jeff. It, oh Godfrey, okay so the, the argument is that we're ignorant. No no I'm not saying that <laughs> I'm just is saying it in fact true Godfrey that that uh, uh, that that uh, Romney is going to get some headway from Chris Christie's uh, endorsement. A little bit, Romney a, is gonna a little bit, a I'm real, sure. A little bit. Is is Mitt Romney going to become a real uh, candidate uh, that could? Uh, if the religious right can get over the fact that he's a Mormon, yeah. I don't I don't yeah. know that they can. We, we on the religious right, speaking as a religious right person. <laughs> 
really doesn't have a problem with him being a Mormon. You do. The, the, yeah, the, 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 the question on Romney still remains, is he really a true conservative? Because we are facing in 2012 a, a really unique opportunity to advance conservatism. This is great coffee shop talk. Is the, is the president going to be able to topple a, uh, a Mitt Romney? Who, who, who do you think is the best Republican uh, to do the best Isn't job it the other way around, President Kevin. Barack Obama. Well, I think Romney has a, a has a chance because I think he's often saying more centrist. He's not as conservative as some of the others in some ways. You believe a Rick and Perry he's more that he's work. more than someone that can bring more people to the table. Some of the people that are leaning too far to the right of your party or even too far to the middle of that are not going to be as successful. You so think I think Romney's Perry? probably the best one. Rick Perry could not do it? No, I don't think so. You don't think Rick Perry can do Rick it? Rick Perry, the longer he gets, the more he's going to shoot himself in the foot. I think he's really in, hurt in, himself. In actuality, what's going to happen is 2012 is going to be referendum the president. And at that point, you know, when you get, we've discussed this before about mm -hmm. the mechanics of how decisions are made when it comes to mm -hmm. voting in presidential elections for an incumbent. But the incumbent's going to be faced, well, did I do a good job? And the answer to that right now is running about 54% of the nation saying no. At that point, we seek the alternative. Is the alternative a plausible candidate for president? Mitt Romney obviously is. There's some others on there. Now, I, I agree with you that I think Mitt Romney gives you a better margin when it's all said and done a victory on the election night, but there's going to be others out there that can easily win. I, I, I would say that Rick Perry, if he gets his uh, train back on the rails, which at this point is a little bit dubious uh, with his debate performances. His right. debate performance has been horrible. And, and I agree but, with you. And I agree but with you on that. I, I right. think there's several others out there that could easily make the case. I think Chris Christie easily could have won. I think uh, uh, I, someone like Herman Cain could win if he gets it on name as well. You know, this, but, but then he brings up a good point. He says that 54 percent of the people he said are, are, are you know, that disapprove. that's not disapprove. But it takes 50 percent to win, so he's only 4 percent out. And in some cases, that's looked at as a margin of error. Two and it and depends on the poll you look at. So it depends on the poll. You're right. Yeah, but, but, those approval ratings and, are around and, 40 to 45. No, but then what so you got to look at the, the the hard. And if you look at the internals mm -hmm. of it, that's a very, very hard Gotta figure. Run. It's almost over 45% that say we are firm not voting for Vote Democratic. At this point. That's Final a very, quick very words from Godfrey Leggett. Final quick Vote words. Democratic. <laughs> Vote Democratic. That's all. Democratic. Vote Democratic in 20. Of course, John and I work together, so we <laughs> both agree. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Guys, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate your, uh, you. cons your, your pers yeah, perspective here uh, and the things we've been talking about today. Appreciate it. We'll see you next time on Southeast Texas Weekly. Take care.